Hello, today I want to talk about goggle antenna diversity. So what I've got here is the newish um, Relac, it's these guys, um, it's called the RX5808 Pro Diversity. Uh, some of you might recognize this sort of display setup of being very similar to the LaForge FPV system you can get. This is a first look because I don't think it's quite usable in the way we've got it at the moment, but I'll come to that in a moment. So the reason I mention LaForge, uh, apart from the fact this is the often comparison, uh, is these are obviously the Chinese clone, but uh, they're quite often vilified um, as being just a pure ripoff. Uh, in this particular case, it is Chinese, it is a lot cheaper, it is a copy of an existing design, but it just originates from the same code base. So Shear Ivy, uh, if that's the way you pronounce his name, who designed the LaForge system, um, and as it says on the LaForge website, is a fork of the RX5808 Pro Diversity open source project on GitHub. Um, fair enough, this project is actually against Shear's Git ID, so it's his thing really, but that in itself is based on another open source project on the RX5808 by Marco Hupkin. Uh, and it pulls in various bits from other people. So yeah, there's a lot of improvements offered by Shear, uh, but he's taken this further and is working on his own closed source code from here in on the Forge, which he's free to do in the MIT license terms. But this also means that this RX580 Pro Diversity project is perfectly free for use by other people. And if they want to commercialize it, they can. Uh, examples of this out there are the Furious FPV True D uh, and this particular offering from Relac. So sorry to go on about this, uh, but it just seems sometimes what you can and can't do is open source, is sometimes misunderstood. I'm not saying that whole heaps of Chinese companies don't completely ignore copyright. They do, it's just in this case, it's absolutely fine. Uh, so I don't feel like I'm hurting any of the developers involved, uh, and I don't think you should either. Well, I must mention this that came in a the box. There's a little socket here for a beeper uh, and this is what they give you so put that pin header in and you too can have this little beeper coming out the end uh, I think we'll just skip the beeper shall we the actual fitting of the OLED screen itself is pretty neat it uh, just about goes in there nicely obviously you can't put a normal door on there um, aside from the big cable hanging down the other side at the moment I've just put on with some stickies so let's power it on and quickly go through just a few of the stock settings here. And it's really difficult to focus the camera on this little screen. So it comes with this three-way rocker which uh, you can go up or down and press in. Here's the auto search system and there's nothing turned on at the moment so it just finds a tiny bit of static somewhere. Uh, the band scanner will produce this little graph which will show uh, where the signal is strong. It's very useful if there's people flying in your field, you can see where they are very quickly. Manual mode, you can obviously just go through your various channels and bands and decide where you want to be. This is diversity where you can set it to one receiver or the other or automatically so it will switch. Uh, and finally in the setup menu where you can make your call sign which will appear on the screen just in case people don't know who you are um, and you can calibrate the RSSI here which you should do before you do anything. Another thing you can do is find a channel and press the button down for a long time and it will save that as your favourite so next time you turn on that will be the channel it starts in. I'm just going to plug something in now just to see how it looks with uh, an actual signal here and you can see the band scanner is finding something on A7 which is actually the wrong channel um, but it should be pointed out that the VTX is about four inches away and is obviously going to bleed over uh, and this shows up in auto seek mode as well where it's finding um, a few of the channels which are obviously just um, five hertz apart now it's actually on airwave band one which it eventually finds I'll just pause it a sec here to explain what we're seeing um, this is what's called screensaver mode. So it, it comes in and puts up your channel um, very big. I guess so other people can see it. 
the things underneath the A and B are the uh, receivers you have. So A is the primary one with the screen, B is the diversity antenna. So the little rectangles actually indicate the strength of the signal. So at this point, both A and B are of just about equal strength, but the filled in bar means this is the one selected. So it's selected the, um, the primary one at the moment. It's got a something in the code that says there has to be at least a, I think it's like a 2% difference between signal strength. Uh, this stops it sort of flicking back and forth, which would be really annoying, especially if you had the beeper connected. Obviously, in a, in a more real life situation, when your VTX would be more than a couple of inches away, you'd have quite a variance of signal strength, so it would look a bit more normal and be much more obvious which one it should be choosing. Okay, here's a quick flight complete with strange windows so you can see as much as you can. I've got a free turn helical on the diversity and a normal skew on the main one. If you look very carefully, you can see a little green LED just lit under the helical, which means that's the active antenna. And you should see when it changes over to the skew in just a second. Uh, what's more crucial about this than what actual antennas being used at the moment is there doesn't seem to be any particular effect when the antennas switch over uh, which is mainly the thing I'm looking for as far as the actual flight goes we're talking about flying a mini quad uh, no more than 300 meters around so it's hardly the best test so the reason I've called this video a first look at the system is I don't intend to use it in this configuration couple of little issues issuettes um, first off, I mean, some people are using these, well it seems to be mainly using them with mini quads, but that's because mini quads are so much everywhere, uh, in which case they're using one of these tiny little square patches which don't weigh anything. Um, this 5 turn helical, although it's pretty light and I could get rid of this bit here and get a new one made, is a bit heavier. So one of the things that happened is I crashed, had to walk across the field to get it, this whole thing peeled off, I suddenly had helical swinging around my nose which wasn't very pleasant but even on this side it feels a little bit wonky without the door um, I went as far as starting to think about printing it that's that's my normal door uh, I printed one out uh, based on someone modeling the forge although the antenna is in the wrong place um, and then I found that Relac had bought out some proper injection molded covers which I thought brilliant so of all of those, Banggood had some major screw up uh, where I ordered them, immediately they were there and then they cancelled my order and they refunded somebody called Mike. Well done Mike, you've got my money. Uh, and that was like talking you know, to a goldfish trying to get that resolved over chat. Uh, but those are now on order, on back order. So basically I'm going to wait till I've got the proper doors. So they've got... Um, a door for the diversity here so this will fit inside where the head tracker goes and they've got the right hole and ditto for there. I think it'll just make it feel a bit more solid because what I want to do with this is fly planes uh, a bit further. I've got my 5 turn which I haven't used before um, and I can get to 5k on the free turn so I really want to see how far I can get but uh, we've always the backup of having a skew if I'm going around the back or if I'm close in uh, it should be easier without having to track it with my head. Um, so that's the first look. Uh, I'll have some more on it um, when I get the doors and at that point I'll think about if I'm gonna make some alterations to put this cable internally depending how the performance is. But that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.